It was an effort made in the hopes of expediting the reopening of Guam Department of Education schools, resulting in yet another delay. Not long into this morning's call for an emergency session, the legislature quickly resolving into the Committee of the Whole as lawmakers objected to Speaker Therese Terlahi's multi-pronged Bill 156. We came into Committee of the Whole notwithstanding the rules. There are no rules to go into Committee of the Whole for non-appropriation bills. Chair, so we are I, here I notwithstanding that, the rules. I made that motion. I never so, said notwithstanding. You said it. I didn't. I made well, that motion. There is no rule to allow us to go into Committee of the Whole for non-appropriation no, bills. Chair, so we are here. Mouth, Madam Chair, you, and we've, we I, I did, did not accommodate. make the motion notwithstanding. Senator, you're out of order. I am not out of order. You, you are, are out, out of order, order. Madam Chair. Minority Leader Senator Frank Blas Jr. making the motion, calling the measure a goulash of different subjects in violation of standing rules, saying Guam DOE and public health needed to be included in the conversation. But the speaker arguing that her bill, which would expedite the review by the public health director of GDOE sanitary variance applications, increase Guam DOE small purchase orders, detail additional inspectors, and temporarily hire GovGuam inspectors are requests from Guam DOE and public health. These all came at their request. We've heard from them hearing after hearing after hearing, and phone calls, and this is their request. Nevertheless, Guam DOE officials engaging in yet another conversation on how legislation like Bill 156 might aid the process of reopening schools. GDOE Deputy Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, Joe Sanchez. But the one area that this bill does really help is the variance section, because if we get the top eight, and I think in discussions with a lot of folks, if these top eight uh, variances are approved, majority, if not all of our schools will pass. Fresh on the job, GDOE Superintendent Dr. Kenneth Swanson adding the proposal is a plus for his agency. And the other part of the bill that speaks to the procurement adjustments will make it possible for us to break the work into smaller bites so we can issue a contract for one school to do one particular set of work, for example, plumbing renovation. And that brings a dollar cost in under the under the threshold that can get us in, in good shape quickly and also use the, the money that, that we have aside of, from <clears throat> the recovery from COVID that, that has to be all obligated anyway. So we can spend that more effectively with the proposed language. Francine Salas, acting chief environmental public health officer, sharing with senators the status of school inspections. So our teams are ready at three a week um, with Bill 156, and I believe uh, the governor has the authority to uh, bring on or transfer uh, some former inspectors into public health to assist us, and we could increase uh, our team, our team uh, composition to maybe five teams and perhaps we could do five schools a week. Salas adds public health would not turn away any additional help, but it would take a while to train inspectors from other agencies without knowledge of how public health conducts inspections. Meanwhile, the definition of variances was discussed at length, with Salas confirming only one district-wide variance for ceiling tiles has been granted to GDOE from public health to date. Session recessed until 11 a.m. tomorrow.